What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 25 of the Whiskey and Nerd Shit Podcast. Today's episode, we're going to cover the Shang-Chi trailer, Quiet Place 2, and Loki episode 3. Also in this episode, we get to drink the Glen Levitt 12 from the Illicit Barrel, Ardberg Scorch, which just dropped in Texas this week, and the James E. Pepper 1776 Barrel Proof per a comment on our last YouTube video. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching now on YouTube. And as always, stay nerdy, drink whiskey, hail Hydra. Whiskey and Nerds Podcast. Reading up on this 12 year. Yeah. Illicit still, I guess, is fancy Scottish words for publicity stunt. <laughs> and we put it in nothing special. Limited Just bottles. Just changed the label. Yeah. It's a limited barrel because it's the only one that's like that. Yeah, kind except of. for the rest of them. Yeah. That are also like that. So this is probably going to taste a lot like Glen Levitt 12 year. Probably. Oh, what are you. Okay, I have. It's a little higher proof than Glen Levitt 12 year would be, though. Yeah. So, hmm. I have notes here. What do you get on the nose? I had a weird note, and then I looked down and saw the weird note that I was thinking. So, I want you to say words before I actually start suggesting things. It's floral, earthy, and peaty. Those are. I don't get a whole lot of peaty. I'm not getting floral, actually. It's earthy. A little bit. It's really sweet. It's a. Uh, it's really sweet to me. Can I give you the n- the nose or the note on the nose that I got right away that yes. this one actually said? Yes. Coconut. I eat coconut. I I got coconut right, right, right away. Here's what the nose. Jammy Quincy. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, but I don't know what that I is. I do get a lot of that. <laughs> a lot of jammy in my nose. Plenty of vanilla and a touch of coconut shavings. Also a whiff of fresh strawberries and powdered sugar. So very sweet on the nose. That's what I got. Yeah. Some faint herbal notes. And slightly perfumey. I can see the perfumey part. I guess that's the perfumey. It's like kind of burning my nostrils a it's little bit. Perfumey for me, and I could be wrong here. Yeah. Perfumey and like the is perfumey is a descriptive word for lightly peaty. In my head, because there's some like I can see that like that where if it's heavily peated, you're like, oh, it's so smoky. Yeah. Where it's lightly peat, they're like, it's kind of perfumey and. Floral. I can see that. That's yeah, makes what sense. I get. I could be completely out of line there. <laughs> On the taste. Well, that just tastes like scotch. Yeah. Just straight up scotch. Yeah. Just simple, straightforward. Yeah, there's no like cinnamon rolls or orange. No, it's just scotch. It tastes like scotch to me. That's all. It's a higher proof scotch. There's a little bit of burn on the end. Yeah, usually scotch you get in the uh, 80 to 85 range. Yeah. And this is what, 90 something? Yeah, 48 ABV. Okay, yeah, so 96. Math, carry the two. Yeah, 96. (laughs) So yeah, that's a good amount. All right. Heavier than a normal scotch. So on the taste, an interesting, an interestingly fruity arrival mainly along okay let me stop you right there listen we talked about this before we read a <laughs> some review of these palettes, yeah some of these get a little review notes i reread the bullet 10 year single barrel one with that was amazing an orchard downwind of blue bonnets blue, like blue bonnets in the blueberry farm oh it was you passed a 27 year old bull you guys <laughs> <laughs> you can tell by his the name is frank by the rings in his poop um, interestingly fruity arrival. 
mainly along the citrus variety. See, I did get a little citrus. But not but anything worth like even mentioning. Also somewhat dry and fairly nutty. Almonds and roasted peanut skins. Just the skins. I chew on a lot of peanut skins. Yeah, it's the best part. A fair spiciness in the background, mainly clove. I kind of get an almond clove thing because it's kind of dry. Yeah. Uh, and a pinch of cinnamon powder, which I don't know Maybe? about that. So that's the thing is with a lot of these, after you taste it and then you read it, you can rationalize the flavors being there. Oh, it's super but, psychosomatic. Yeah, this yeah. one is just scotch. It just tastes I like did scotch. get a little citrus right off like in the very beginning, a little citrus. And then after that, it is scotch. There's a dryness that reminds me of almonds. Mm, I couldn't tell you, oh, this tastes like almonds. Yeah. There's just, hey, there's kind of a dryness. Kind of like when you eat almonds. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. That's about the extent of it. Does it go into, because this is the um, the illicit. Yeah, the illicit still. Does it go into what kind of barrel it was put into? Or are we just assuming it was regular oak? A standard probably used oak, just like they always do. Because I'm wondering, because a lot of, what I'm learning is a lot of the whiskeys that I like, or I'm sorry, not whiskey, scotches that I like, are usually finished in unorthodox barrels. So... Which brings us to Ardbeg, Scorch. It's called Scorch because they get used or ex bourbon barrels. Yes. So heavily charred. And I think the word they use is fiercely. And I'll read the entire back of that box because it's ridiculous and fantastic. Cult of Ardbeg shit. Yeah. So, but it's they take ex bourbon casts and just. Re fiercely char the absolute shit out of them. So they char already extremely charred. Yeah, and then okay. finish it in that to give you a whole different flavor, and it's potent. Not hot as in high ABV, but it has that thing has to turn sideways to walk through doors. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll sip on this. But yeah, uh, the finish on this, lingering oak, spices, gentle sweetness, medium in length. This tastes like scotch. Scotch. Yeah. yeah. It's roughly the same price point, around 60 bucks for us, probably varying. But it's the same price point as it's regular Glenn Levitt 12. So. Glenn Levitt 12 with a little higher proof. Yeah, that's really it. It's good. That being said, it does give you a little more f- flavor. It's more, a little more it's, burn on it's the end. It's still scotch, but it's a little scotchier scotch. You know what helps? burping up chipotle flavor into your scotch yeah do you have the red salsa no there was just so much crap in my burrito bowl yeah the red salsa changes some things yeah both about you and what you're drinking yes well also the red salsa it's not very hot Mm -mm. at all as we know i can damn near eat lava yeah but for some reason it's very acidic yes something about it will not agree with my stomach the next day same Every single time. Yet I get it almost every bowl. Yep. No, I I dropped down to green. I was like, you know what? I got stuff to do. I can't. <laughs> I can't waste tomorrow yeah, today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I can't do that. That's so. fair. Um, I don't have a ton of headlines. Just some random stuff. I just have one, and I'm sure you have it on yours as well. Possibly. The new Shang Chi trailer. Drop. That is really my only one. Yes. And it looks. It looks amazing. Fucking awesome. Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, Abomination is back. He is. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, as we just saw in a fun little cartoon, they did not kill Abomination no. at the end of Incredible Incredible Hulk. Um, they're apparently using him as I don't know Goro. Essentially, a, yeah, some little a fight club cage fight. Um, everyone on the breakdown of the trailer, everyone's like, he's fighting Wong. No, he's just fighting somebody. Yeah. From Doctor Strange's Coven of Sorcerers. Yeah. That doesn't mean he's Wong. I don't think he's going to have a profound role. No, he's going to be in one scene. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be Charizard and Detective Pikachu. You're like, oh, fuck, it's a Charizard. That's cool. Next scene. Next scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's going to be about that. Yeah. But it's Marvel, and they like to throw back and recall in any way they can yeah i 
I've seen a few trailers now for Shang-Chi, mm-hmm. and I'm getting more and more excited about it. I started off like, eh. Really? The I was more, the pretty more gung-ho I've seen, from the word go. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is going to be really badass. I'm still waiting for Eternals to hit me like that. Because it looks like it's going to be cool. Well, I don't think they're showing you... What it's actually about. Yes, because... They're showing us to be like an art project, as far as the trailers show so far. Kind of. It's what it looks like. But I know that Jon Snow, who is in it, mm-hmm. is going to be playing the character of the Black Knight. Yes. Which, for to really dumb down layman's turn of, terms of the Black Knight character... Think Violence. Thor... Think like the dark version of Thor with a sword that is all powerful and but the worse he is, the more pissed off he gets, the shittier of a human being that has it, the more powerful that sword is. Okay. So I have a feeling something happens, probably in Loki and whatever else. Yeah. Whatever builds up to it. And they're going to have a storyline of, because they've been around the whole thing, and they let Endgame happen, and, you know, talk about Iron Man's gone, who's going to run the Avengers? Well, I could. So, you have all that running. There has to be, like we talked about a couple weeks ago, there has to be a bigger threat. And you can bring in Black Knight as a hero, anti-hero type of situation. Yeah. That they're going to use him to help stop whatever larger issue there is yeah with the eternals and that's going to create and set up for something bigger so you're later. saying it's got amazing potential absolutely i've also heard that it's gonna be really hard to give him a pg-13 movie uh, i praise be to marvel i mean <laughs> don't make it happen I'm yeah sure. but i've heard his character is just uh as violent as can be pretty much it's kind of like oh they're gonna do a moon knight TV show on Disney Plus. You better have a different section <laughs> if you're going to do that right. Yeah. If you're going to do any justice to that character. Yeah. There needs to be an adult section. Yeah, exactly. On Disney. Disney Plus After Dark. No mice allowed. Yeah. It, Disney Plus After Dark. Batman can go down people in that section. Yeah. Which brings me to my other headline. Batman's going down on Catwoman and people are upset about it. Yeah, I saw that. Um... Snyder released that picture on his (laughs) Twitter. So the writers tried to put it in Harley Quinn, the show, which is funny. They didn't because that show gets away with everything. Have you ever watched any of it? It's, it's on HBO max, throw it on. You don't have to dive into it. I haven't watched a ton. I've watched like two or three. Yeah. They get away with fucking everything. Really? They do all well, kinds of shit. Well, it's HBO, of, so you can They like, do eh. all kinds of shit on Let's that throw show. Throw some shit in there. Yes. All kinds of shit. So the fact that they wouldn't let Batman go down on Catwoman and then Zack Snyder to come back and be like, bam, canon. I'll do it. <laughs> it's canon. It happened. This is the thing. Yeah. And, and listening to Kevin Smith, he's like, that's exactly what heroes do. <laughs> <laughs> Goddamn right. That dude might get killed from the business end of a question mark gun. He's doing all kinds of crazy shit on rooftops. Yep. So, yeah, that's... Anyway. Good for Batman. You live know, your best life. You live for the... Yeah. Yeah. You do you. Yeah. Don't let the critics say who, what you can and can't do in the Egg, bedroom. Exactly. It's America. Or Gotham. Wherever that is. Also, I don't think we talked about it, but I watched the trailer a couple times... Last night, actually, a couple of trailers. He Man and Masters of the Universe trailer. Yeah. Kevin Smith got brought back to do it. The guy that approached him, I don't know if the guy was working with Mattel. Mattel right. Toy Company is yeah. what owns He Man. They owned He Man back in the 80s. Um, I don't know if he approached Mattel or worked for Mattel, but they approached Kevin Smith saying, We have an idea to redo He Man and Masters of the Universe. Can you do it? Yeah, of course. What kind of... How do you picture? How do you want it done? I want it to be the 80s cartoon that everyone loved. Done in 2021. He's like, the feeling I had... It's what we need right now. It's exactly what we need right now. He-Man in our lives. He's like, the feeling I had watching it as a kid, playing with the toys, listening to Holding Out for a Hero, because that's when the song came out in the 80s. Yeah. I want that feeling 
as an adult watching the exact same show. He's like, we can do that. And then you see that trailer. The trailer was pretty badass. It was a badass For trailer. An animated He-Man. Is it, it's going to be a TV show, right? Yeah. Yeah. You have He-Man, who is... God, I wish I could remember his name. He's in Supergirl. He's the one that married Melissa Benoist. Uh, I can't remember his name, and I don't know the name of his character because I never really watched Supergirl. Yeah. He is He-Man. And... Then you see He-Man fighting Skeletor, and the battle scene looks awesome, and you hear that laugh. Yeah. The laugh is none other than Mark Hamill, because... Why not? Why, of course. Who else would you... Voices everything else, yeah. Exactly. Why... He was obviously the Joker, he was the Green Goblin, or the Hobgoblin in the Spider-Man cartoon. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. The orange one? Yeah. In the first season? Yeah. Yep. Mark Hamill. Hmm. Amongst a million and a half other things yeah. he's done. Um, but yeah, it looks fucking awesome. Yeah. It was a great trailer. What, what streaming service is it going to be on? Netflix. Netflix? Licensed okay. by Netflix. And I think it comes out the end of next month. I think it's July 29th. Okay. So I don't have to wait long for that one. That one's going to be sweet. So that'll come out just after the release of Black Widow. Two weeks after Black Widow. So we're only going to have one week of Marvelous or without something going on. Something going on. Yeah, because we're going to have Black Widow, nothing, He-Man now. Yeah, well, because Black Widow comes out on the 9th. The 9th, yeah. So not this coming weekend. So it's basically two weeks from yesterday. Yeah. Finally. Watch. On the 8th, they're like, hey, sorry, we got to push this back. <laughs> <laughs> we're like three more years. Yeah. No big deal, right? It'll be a 2023 We've already release. released like everything you're going to know about all the other TV shows. So. Fuck it. But yeah, this weekend was A Quiet Place 2 and Fast and the Furious. 97. <laughs> and next weekend is um, the Tomorrow War. Yes. With Chris Pratt. That one I'm very excited. And, and Yvonne Strahovski's in it. Yes. Mm. And Top Gear 2 is next weekend, July 2nd. Top Gear 2? Or not, Top Gun 2. Sorry. Fuck me. I forgot about Top Gun 2 coming out next weekend, too. Yeah, Maverick. Is that also only in theaters? Because I will uh, drop... I don't think it's coming out on HBO. I think it's just theaters. Take my money. I'm Yeah. I'm going to be in the theaters for the next two weeks. Yeah. I, uh, I went and saw A Quiet Place 2 last night, which I'll give a little review on. I'm going to see Fast and the Furious tomorrow. Uh, and then I hear they drive. Legitimately drive a car in space. I did hear in one of the radio trailers, Tyrese yell, Oh my God, we're in space! Yeah. So I think it happens on accident also, which makes it that much better. When they accidentally drove a car into space. They were mechanics souping up Mazdas. Yeah. Tyrese was on House of it, Arrest. It was Fast 4. Fast and Furious 4, whatever. When Toretto came back, Vin Diesel. Yes. And Paul Walker, and they're battling drug dealers that run cars to move drugs. Yes. You're like, and they had to be able to race to get into that group. To, to run the drugs, run the drugs yeah. and do everything that way. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I can buy this a little bit. The progression is actually impressive. Yeah. You're like, okay, I can kind of buy this a little bit. It's a little weird, but they're not doing anything out of the realm of, you know, criminals that can drive really fast getting paid to do it. Yeah. Seems, yeah. seems it legitimate. Fits. It still fits. Still We're still fits. in the same realm. And then the next one. They take on the entire country of Brazil. And rob a bank, the rocks there. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez, she comes back from the dead again. Yeah. Yeah. Or was killed? No. No, she, she was, comes back in no, four. No, she was killed in... She was killed in four. Four. She comes back in five. Yes. Or six. Or six. God damn it. But that's when the one where they have the uh, giant bank vault tearing up all of downtown Rio. Um, and then... Uh, being pulled by two Dodge Chargers. So maybe The Rock's not in that one. Gal he G is. Because he's isn't. hunting Dominic Toretto. Because at the very end... But I thought The Rock showed up with Gina Carano. 
and at they the end they give him the hey do you believe in ghosts at the very end and he opens up the file and it's michelle rodriguez and then does he get Gina Carano in the fifth one? Because that's the one where they had the 177 mile runway on a plane. That's the sixth one. Jesus Christ. Or seventh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot. The progression's impressive. Yeah. D- yeah this guy is a mechanic to... and a street drag racer. Mm-hmm. And then he's being recruited by secret underground organizations to stop global chaos and global super terrorists. terrorists. Yeah. Dual welding 80 pound wrenches that he swings as if they're baseball bats. <laughs> Fucking immediate then, collie expert. Curb it, stomps the parking garage. <laughs> stepped on the parking garage so hard as a 5'10", 190 pound man. Actually, yeah. I think Vin Diesel's six foot. Yeah. He's, he, I am, me and Vin Diesel are the same size, and I am not a big individual. Yeah. I am not stomping on anything and making it fall apart other than a cockroach. If yeah. I'm lucky. Yeah. Well, you can't do it with 40 pound wrenches. So. <laughs> I, I can't wield 40 one pound. One thing he's got on you, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I should really work on my Israeli stick fighting techniques with wrenches <laughs> against... Uh. Um, oh, what was who was he fighting? Jason Statham. Jason Statham, yeah, because he had like um, what did he have? He had something else. A pipe. I want to say it was a pipe. Yeah. Was he using a car door as a shield? I don't know. He should have been. Anyways, on to good movies. <laughs> um, so I watched A Quiet Place two okay. last night. Okay. Um, so you haven't seen A Quiet Place 1 yet. Do you I want have to not tell seen... you the premise of A Quiet Place 1? I know the premise. I'm familiar, in-depth familiarity with the story without any having any real spoilers up to this point. With okay. that said, full disclosure. Spoilers. Spoilers for me. Quiet Place spoilers 2. Spoilers for everyone out there. Um, John Krasinski dies in the first one. Yes. Um, he does so by sacrificing himself to save his family. Yeah. Um, there's a scene in the first one. There's two scenes that are worth watching. The rest of the movie is great. There are two scenes worth watching. First one happens in the first five minutes. The last one happens in the last five minutes. First one, they're out scavenging for supplies. Uh, the little kid has a toy uh, spaceship. Makes noise. Well, there's monsters. Why the fuck would you let a kid have a toy spaceship that they're makes out noise? collecting supplies and he finds it. You grab so, that from him and you check for batteries. So they take the batteries out. Well... Okay, so one of the best parts about this entire two movies, there's going to be a third one. Careful. Um, there is the daughter of the family. Yes, the actress She's is legitimately deaf. deaf. Yes. The whole so reason he made it yes. was for her because she was so good. Um, and she is a standout in these films. Much like the little girl in Godzilla vs. Kong, who is also... Yes. Her whole family deaf. is deaf. Yes. So, um, very cool to see... Those kinds of movements happening, getting yes people, especially it works so well. Yeah, and it brings an an added element to where it's that's real, that's an, legitimate, an added appreciation yes. for what's happening there. And I am far be it me from being you know this has never happened before, but seeing more and more opportunities like that for kids dealing with various aspects of their life, getting yeah. a chance to be on that grand of stage. Very cool. It makes you appreciate and want to see the movie more. Absolutely. It was absolutely the best part of Godzilla vs. Kong. <laughs> Wasn't hard. <Yeah. laughs> but she did it. Low bar. <laughs> Very low bar. Um, so I remember a an interview with Tom Hardy when he played Bane in Batman. Mm-hmm. And he said that the biggest challenge he had playing that role was he had to play the entire role without being able to act with his mouth and most of his face because it was covered by a mask. Only his eyes. He could only act with his eyes. Well, in this movie, they can't talk, mm-hmm. so they act with their body so language. Phys- physic- so your body language physically. actually I can't fucking talk. says, <laughs> yeah, you, physically, your body language That's <laughs> the word. says like 70% of what you mean. Yeah. So when you can't really talk, and they, they, they do have scenes where they talk. They have like secret like underground things where they can go talk to each other. It's very limited. Yeah. She also has a baby. Emily Blunt has a baby in the first one. So having a baby... That uh, seemed like a bad idea. Uh, yeah, you can't make any noise while you have the baby. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, 
great movie. Um, anyways, in the beginning of the first one, the deaf girl trying to be a good sister. They take the batteries away from the little boy. He's sad. And she goes, you know what? I'll make him happy. Gives him the batteries back. Parents aren't looking. So they're all walking back to their camp. And they have the, the movie makes so much sense because they have uh, sand paths. Mm-hmm. throughout because sand sand absorbs sound mm-hmm. so they can walk to certain areas and know that they're Not safe noise. Yeah. and so they're walking across this bridge and again it's the acting it's so it's to me it's artistic yeah to where they're all walking and it's like zoomed in on uh john krasinski's face and then all of a sudden you hear the spaceship toy going off and it's just bug eyes like pure panic you're like you feel like yeah oh fuck and so you see him turn around, and he is just full sprint, trying to get to his kid. And then it's just, boom, <laughs> kid's gone. So the entire first movie, uh, the little deaf girl, is under the impression of, my dad hates me. I killed my brother. I killed my brother. Uh, yeah, I'm the reason why he died. My dad hates me. Um, fast forward to the end. They're in a car. Kids are being attacked. There's a monster on top of the car. John Krasinski, blood curdling scream. Right before he does that, he signs, I love you. I've always loved you. Mm-hmm. Then he starts yelling. And then he's gone. Fast forward to the second movie. John Krasinski's back. <laughs> We're like, Flash- what? Flashbacks? So it goes back to how the monsters came. Yeah. And they're all like a little little league baseball game. And um, the Thomas Shelby, the lead character from Peaky Blinders, mm-hmm. he's in the sequel. So he's Murphy? the new yes, he's the new male lead. Okay. Since John Krasinski is out. Yeah. So it shows kind of how the monsters came to be, and it is a scene to where I don't think I took more than two or three breaths in like an eight minute span, because it is there. They see this like ship like landing. It's on say, fire. Don't they come from space? Yeah, okay. they come from space. They're aliens. And so they see the ship landing, and they're all running back. It's a small town. Mm-hmm. They're all running back to the cars, like, oh, something, something's not right. So they're all running back, um, and they're immediately started getting attacked. And that's when, like, in the trailer, you see the whole scene with the uh, the bus yeah. and all this chaos. Um, and it just kind of shows how they came to be, how they immediately wiped off, like, 95% of the population. The other 5% is all in hiding. John Krasinski is now dead. Fast forward to post movie one yeah um and they're out of supplies they have nothing there anymore because john krasinski who basically the dad is no longer there so they have a newborn they don't have the way they keep the newborn quiet is they put an oxygen mask over him when he starts crying so he gets oxygen and kind of puts him to sleep a little bit um so they keep the baby from crying so they need to move on and find a new civilization home something um they meet up with Thomas Shelby from Peaky Blinders. And long story short, they're trying to find safety. Uh, they learn that the aliens cannot swim. There's an island. Whole movie is trying to get to the island. Um, the MMA trainer from Never Back Down. Big black guy. Chitty. Yeah, that long one. Long 19 digit last name. Yes, 27 syllables. Yeah. He's also in uh, Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy and Captain Marvel. Yes. yes. Um, so he's in it. So it was a nice little, eh, I know that guy. Yeah. Moment. Uh, He'll always yeah. be the guy from Never Back Down. Yes. He's always. in. He's a, such a good actor. He's in a million different things. All infinitely better than Never Back Down. <laughs> but he'll forever be known. The guy from Never the Back from Down. The guy from Never Back Down. Yeah. But yeah, so... The movie, it's it's really good. It to me, and I'm talking the best sci fi movie outside of like Marvel type stuff. Mm-hmm. But like as far as thrillers, you can kind of throw it into the realm of scary movies because it it's very suspenseful. Yeah, it is the best of those. It is suspenseful. It makes you damn near cry. It makes you on the edge of your seat. See, you hold your breath. Mm. But so, it's so artistic because you can't act with words. You have to act with body language, with emotion, with facial so expressions. you get to appreciate that skill yes. of everything else. So here's my problem. Specifically, my problem. Is none of that kind of stuff bothered me until I had a daughter. 
And then my anxiety was like, oh, what's this button? 11. <laughs> so anything that's even remotely suspenseful and difficult around kids, I have the absolute hardest time dealing with. Yeah. So even movies that I had seen a hundred times before, Amityville Horror, Ryan Reynolds remake. Yeah. Because Ryan Reynolds, no yeah. shirt, he's Why just not? fantastic. Um, we don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. Uh, but I had seen that movie a hundred times. It's a movie that I would go and look to watch every Halloween. Right. Along with... Horror movie season. Yeah. You know, regular Halloween, the original, and uh, the original 1990s It with Tim Curry. Mm -hmm. Tried watching it each of the last couple years. Can't do it. The little girl, Chloe Mertz, whatever the nuts. Yeah. Chloe Grace Mertz. Yes. Can't, can't do it. Now... Having seen that one movie where she's, you're welcome for that, by the way. Where she's battling Shadow in the clouds. Shadow in the clouds. Having seen Shadow in the clouds, I kind of wish Sophie would have kind of dragged her off into the closet and saved us all some trouble. <laughs> but that movie, if you haven't seen it, get on Hulu, watch Shadow in the Clouds. Worst movie you'll ever watch in your entire life. Don't ever do that for any reason, <laughs> ever. Everything wrong with Captain Marvel was put on gamma radiation steroids yeah. for this movie yeah. of pandering girl power. But yeah, no, for whatever reason, I have such a hard time with things dealing with kids, which is weird because one of my absolute favorite horror movies is the remake of It. It, yeah. Come here, little Georgie. Yeah, so that first scene, I have a really hard time watching. Yeah. The worst scene between the two movies. Did you watch the sequel? I have not seen the sequel. I heard it does not live up to the first one. God bless you. Don't watch the sequel. Yeah. But there's a scene in there where a little girl, they're at a game, like a high school basketball game or okay. football game or yeah. whatever it is. She goes under the bleachers, much like we all did as kids. Mm -hmm. And Pennywise is down there and makes the girl feel guilty for not wanting to play with him. Because he looks different. And what freaks me out is because my daughter is this way. is She's never met a stranger. So she's like, okay. And then he eats her face. As Pennywise would. As Pennywise would. Pennywise is going to Pennywise. <laughs> so because of that, shit like that, I'm just like, I can't fucking watch these movies. It's Marvel, Star Wars, or bust. Yeah, you might not want to watch A Quiet Place. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're going to move on to Ardbeg. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. Mostly because when I went to grab it, I saw the coaster on top, kind of locking everything in. Mm -hmm. And my bourbon looks like a glass of bourbon. This looked like there was a mini fire started in here a little uh, while ago. And it was smoke? just full of smoke. Okay, so there's all kinds of noses on that. There is. I'm going to read the back of this box. Because it's, it's interesting. I'm so excited about this. There's even water vapor on the glass where whiskey has not been swirled yet. So, Cult of Ardbeg. Super peaty, very smoky yeah. scotch. It's Ardbeg versus, uh, what is it, Laforag? Laphroaig. Laphroaig, yeah. yeah. Uh, Isla Scotch. So yeah, naturally. those are the two cults of scotch. Yeah, Laphroaig has their own, especially the 10-year cash strength. Yeah. That's one of the last bottles that I actually really want to get outside of that. I have drank one glass of whiskey outside of last night and like, yeah, if, if we take away the podcast and last night I have like one, maybe two glasses period, just cause I'm so damn busy. Yeah. So I need to stop throwing money at something I'm not partaking in, but Lefroy 10 year cash strength. I really want to try Yeah. this one. Isla's flavor breathing dragon. Again, Ardbeg Scorch. Yeah, you got little dragons all over the uh, the box there. Dragons. There's a little dog with a shield and a sword fighting off the flames on a bourbon barrel. 
which yeah. is awesome. And the 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 box itself is covered in bourbon barrels that are still being charred, charred. by a dragon. Yeah. So the box itself is very artistic, very fun. Yeah. The flavor breathing dragon is what this thing says on it. It's called Scorch, the ultimate Isla single malt Scotch whiskey, non chill filtered. Limited edition, fiercely charred cask. Listen to this shit. You want to talk about overselling some whiskey? Yeah, let's see what Ardbeg's got to say about their... From the shadowy depths of Dunnage Warehouse 3 comes a single malt of fantastic proportions. Matured in our most heavily charred casks, toasted cloves, and wisps of sweet peat smoke. Interlaced with thick clouds of briarwood and sage. Discover the layers, not layers, layers, like a dragon layer oh, of L-A-I-R-S. flavor. Oh, L-A-I-R-S. Yeah. In the fire-breathing beast of a dram. You know what? You guys do you. I like your creativity. So if you belonged to one of the cults, which one would you think it would be? Uh, right now it'd have to be Ardbeg, because I've only tried Lafroy once. Yeah, same. So I think I tried it with you. Yeah, we did. Yeah, like, oh, else. That's good. Yeah. Really smoky. I like it. Um, we've had a few Ardbegs now. Yeah, we've tried this a couple different times. So, on the nose, how you feeling? Not to interrupt your sip. It's a lot going on. You get the peat and you get the smoke. You get the smoke, you get the peat, you get a little vanilla, and you get some spices. And there's a weird note in there. Yeah. It's like... um. It's almost reminded me of like marshmallow, like creamy. You don't get like a rubber. I'm gonna lead you. Man, I gotta like reset my palate every time I take a There's sniff. There's everything. I finally got the band aid note. The Scotch band aid note. The iodine, whatever. Yeah. I don't really get rubber now. No? No. Last night it was. Widely agreed. Unanimous. This is campfire and band-aids. Campfire and band-aids? I, I can get band-aids, yeah. Yeah. I don't get rubber. I get smokiness, a little creaminess, vanilla, and I can get I can pull together some band-aids. Now try it. It tastes like a vegetable. <laughs> What does that taste like? Hang on. I love it. Up front, it's like creamy fruits. And then on the back end is like a brisket char. Peppery, smoke. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. It was weird. Like the, the very first sip I got, for whatever reason, it was like a, like a, not asparagus, but like a zucchini almost. It was a weird note. I didn't, I didn't get it all in the second. Maybe I got too much air in my sip. But yeah, it tastes like a campfire. Extremely oily. Oh, yeah. Have you tried it with uh, ice yet? I haven't played with it. This is my first actual glass. Again, I let everyone else pour this last night, and I had literally a sniff and a sip of somebody else's glass. Yeah. That was all. Isla's flavor-breathing dragon for centuries. Isla folk have told... I wish I could do a Scottish accent for this. Yeah. And really sell it. We need to hire Conor McGregor. I hear he's well, cheap. Well, he's Irish. You Oh yeah. regional son of a bitch. Who uh, is Scottish? I don't know. Mike like Myers the, being fat bastard. The maintenance guy from The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> Groundskeeper Willie. Yeah. It's a kilt. Um, folks have told a great many tales... Of heroes and dragons on the island, from the age-old saga of King Garalach. That's what it says. If you like smoky scotch, this is an amazing scotch. It really is. It really it's is. It's so creamy and smooth, yeah. and then has, again, that like peppery brisket smoke flavor on the end. So I'm reading through this the back end here, just to see if there's more notes that kind of... Break it down. No. No, there's not. Um, when was that scotch produced? When was it put out on the market? It was recent, right? It's uh, a newer... Yeah, it literally just hit... So it may not even be old enough yet to have... Well, 
Reviews on Google, I mean. It just, for us, for Texas, this just hit shelves, like, this week, week yesterday. Ago, yeah. They literally just put it on the shelf yesterday at Liquor King, where I go, so. Ardbeg Scorch is matured in our most heavily charred ex-bourbon casts. Delicious homage to the distillery's mightiest and smokiest myth. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Long story, propaganda, cool box, delicious smoky whiskey. Yeah, very smoky. It is very good. I, I don't get as much of the fruity notes as you get. I do get very creamy up front. Uh, the fruit gets right. subsided. If, if you were to drink one of these alongside a good smoked pulled pork or a good smoked brisket, mm-hmm. they would pair very well. Yes. Very, very well. Yeah, to the that point be... that I'm thinking about hitting up Lockhart's when I leave here to grab food to take it home to drink another one of these while I... That's probably a fantastic idea. That's <laughs> I'm, probably... I'm, I'm kinda, you can't go wrong I'm right kind of talking myself into that pretty substantially I think right that now. needs to happen for scientific purposes. Yeah. For the podcast. For the... You're going to have to do it, man. I'm going to have to do it for the podcast now. Yeah. <laughs> we can justify damn near anything. True story. <laughs> It's um, good. It's so good. you're not a huge. Uh, it, I don't enjoy this as much as you enjoy this, but yes. That being said, this is a lot more enjoyable than some of the smokier, peatier ones in the past. My end all be all still for uh, scotch. For scotch. Okay. Uh, as far as the smoky peatiness. Oh, okay. Logabullen. Logabullen sixteen. Yeah. I should, we should do a side-by-side side between the two of them. We should. That would be a good... Again, for science. For science. Yeah. Yeah. For you guys. For research purposes. <laughs> um, for content. My end-all, be-all for scotch, though, that McAllen 18 was fantastic. Well, because we... You and I talked about it, actually, right before we started, is you haven't found your... My scotch n- niche. Your niche in scotch. You haven't yeah. found... When I think scotch, I think... Oh, I really like this group. Like, yeah. we go to bourbon, we're like, real bourbon, vanilla notes, Michter's flavoring. Yeah. In that kind Elijah of... Elijah Craig. Yeah. yeah. The the New Riff style, this kind of dark thing I'm definitely really attracted to. Yeah. It's scotch. We're still so new into it. I very quickly drew to the smokiness. Yeah. Which I think is the southwest region of Scotland. I don't know. There's a picture on the back of this box yeah because there i know there's five different like uh regions there are of scotland it's like the highlands the lowlands yep southwest yeah southwest so that's where the peatier isla scotches come from isles of isla so lagavulin ardbeg lafroig yes uh there's more but those are the main ones yeah right now uh the ones that i have on the shelf over here uh glenlilip 14 but again it's finished in a cognac cask so it adds a different little element. I really enjoy that. That one is... Lenfittic 14. Unfair how good it is. So it is, is that one. But it's... Again, it tastes like a bourbon scotch. And I think that's why I enjoy but it But so then much. you got the... The Glenmorangie is finished in port barrels. So it's like they're all... I forgot that those were the first three scotches I really tried. And they yeah. were all so good. But I mean, you got Balvini. We just did the Balvinis. And the Balvini is amazing. And it's American oak. You got Which American is, oak, and then we just had the one that's rum finished with the Chris. Caribbean, yeah, Caribbean cask. And see, I really enjoy all those. And yeah. So I think that right now is more where I'm leaning, scotch wise. I'm not into the scotch the, with good finishes. Yes, I'm not really into the the plain like the um, the Glen Levitt over here. It tastes like scotch. It's scotch. I'll drink it, but it's not one of my go tos. The Ardbeg. This one's phenomenal. It's very good. But the high peat, high smokiness is not my go-to. I think right now, I think I'm still breaking into it. Yeah. And so the ones that are finished, whether it be finishing Cognac, Port, Bourbon Barrel, and even Balvini. I mean, Balvini is pretty run-of-the-mill, but it's just not super scotchy. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm breaking in. Which is weird. I, I definitely assumed that, much like with even Bourbon, because when we both started doing this, you went to bourbon real quick. Yep. And I went to rise. I liked rise. I liked the different fruity flavors. Mm-hmm. It was a little bit lighter, but there's still some weight to it. Yeah. It wasn't Irish, which has never done it for me. It just yeah. always seems so light and basic. Yeah. It wasn't uh, freaking Canadian, which is vanilla and metallic flavors. Yeah. It, 
those do not do it for me at all. But you always went that way. So as we started to play in Scotch a little bit, I definitely thought you would kind of jump on it faster. Yeah. Part of the problem might be I have company that generally likes scotch more than yes. she likes anything else. Yeah. Um, and Japanese, because it, it's essentially scotch. Yep. Uh, so because of that, I'm trying a lot more different things. And I immediately went to the boldest of the group. Yeah. You went to the bourboniest of the scotch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm still... I, while I do, I think that is my second favorite. That's the one I lean most towards besides specialty finished scotches. Yeah. And I agree with that because if you're like, hey, man. Oh, shit. That's a damn question. Do you want a Lagavulin in 16 or you want a Glen Levitt 14? Ooh. Or a Macallan 18. Because that's, you got north, you got southwest, and you have east. And then you got, you got space side. See, I think, I don't know, that Macallan 18 is something else, though. It's a, it's almost like a league of its own, and it, that's why I think it's very oh, good. But and then it, you it have is the Glendronic just eight, fifteen that you have. Oh god, that one's good too. Put all four of those in a fatal four way match, and I, I think it still comes out. The I winner. think it still comes down to Lockable in sixteen or Glen Levitt fourteen because those two are just yeah so good. Yeah, and it's they're they're so unique. And I got a Highland Park cast strength sitting on my shelf. Yeah. That hasn't been touched in a long time. We need to crack that bad boy open. It's very good. I quite enjoy it. Yeah. So before we jump into Loki. Okay. Talking last night with Eric, we have created an idea. So the text messages that we had this week about who would win in a battle between Mark Wahlberg and Matt Damon, and Matt Damon both with only Edward Dildo hands. 10 inch long floppy black floppy dildos duct taped to their hands. Who would win in a battle? Yeah. To which I responded to the very odd text message at 1030 at night. I saw it at four o'clock in the morning when I woke up. I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> Yeah, I was like, well, I'm up. Yeah. <laughs> Let's entertain this. Uh, I responded with, well, my money right off the bat would go Matt Damon, but Mark Wahlberg did almost kill a guy. Yeah, hate crime. Like 20 years ago, an old age. 30 dude. years ago, yeah. 30 years ago, yeah, it's been a while. Straight hate crime. Um, Those Boston people are Mark assholes. Mark Wahlberg is still in very good shape. Matt Damon is hit he, and miss when he's not on a Bourne movie. Yeah. Uh, and Mark Wahlberg did train boxing for his Mickey Still Ward does. movie. Still does. Still does. Um, the fighter. But are you going to box with 10-inch black floppy dildos on your hands? You, I mean, the dildos add a reach advantage. I mean, if already, you could just use, like, hip motion yeah, and... you got the technique down. I just, like, Matt Damon It's like a wacky, wave, wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man, but with just giant dildos. Yeah, yeah. So this was a full 24-hour text conversation. Well, it's expanded. Because now... Do we add more characters to the game? We sure as shit did. And what's going to happen is, on a Whiskey and Nerd Shit night, our own gathering, we're going to have a celebrity deathmatch bracket. Okay. So it's those two. It's Rob Riggle versus Patrick Warburton. Yeah. And then it's Britney Spears with her batshit crazy strength. Is it 2006 Britney Spears? Where she shaves her head and loses her mind? Yeah. And she's on meth. Okay. And I forgot who we're putting her. Christina Aguilera, same time period? No, I'd put Christina Aguilera more common because she might eat her. Okay. Um, Fair. She got big. Um, so we're going to create an entire bracket and run it. Straight March Madness style. Are we gonna have like a full like sixteen participants? I think it might might two, be two, 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 like two, two, four two, and two. four eight man tournament. But the winner, whoever wins the tournament, we then put up against Keanu Reeves. That's fair. Because Keanu fair. Keanu Reeves is Shao Kahn in Mortal Kombat. Like you beat everybody else, 
then you get to fight. But the, then you it's the reigning champion. Is this person good enough to be Keanu Reeves? He automatically gets reigning champion. It's Keanu Reeves. The dude can outshoot you. He can outfight you. It's a monthly or quarterly thing where we re up with new celebrities and constantly have a running champion. So that's in the works now. I'm a fan. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Is that going to be recorded or is that going to be. No, that's ours. That's I just, ours. I just wanted okay. to. We Sorry, can. Guys. We'll give updates. We'll give updates. We'll let you guys know who wins. I'm going to fuck up this microphone. I see that. There's a lot of I, cracking I, and cranking going on yeah, over there. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know if it's my hip or the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> also, we what we're going to do on podcast is Eric stumbled across a article on the exact ratio of how to proof down your whiskeys to find your personal preferred proof. So we're gonna. Do you have to start with something really high? You'd probably have to, like a barrel proof, like a one thirty. We like, have a one forty. <laughs> honestly, that one would be start perfect. There, yeah, but and work our way down. Here in the next couple of weeks, um, we're gonna bring him on. We'll go over everything the article says. That would be a perfect use of that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Not many other uses. It's that's cleaning off engine grease. Great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then. We're going to play with that because I think my favorite, I think my preferred whiskeys are around 55%. You're very distracted. Who is on Hulk's shoulder? Ant-Man. Oh, I guess that's Wasp flying in the front. Yeah. Wasp is over him. Yeah. Okay, never mind. From here, it kind of looks like Spider-Man. I see Spider-Man on the bottom left. Who's in the background? It kind of looks like Doctor Strange. I think it's Doctor Strange. That's Doctor Strange. Is it though? Yeah. Where do you... Because it's all MCU. Okay. But yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna do that, and then I guess it's almost over because we're in Endgame now. Makes sense. So we're gonna do that, and then move into playing with our own whiskeys. I always thought mine was around fifty-five, but we'll actually be able to dial it down to. I really like bourbon at 52 percent and get really really nerdy with it so does it go down like by the percentage or does it go to about like five percent increments i don't know we're gonna find out interesting i like that get a range but really dial in one i know my flavor notes that i like to hit yeah like that tx bourbon we kept talking about last night of just liquid caramel and brown sugar and it was just bold and the, the barrel proof creamy one. and delicious yeah. yeah and you get another one of those yeah, they, they just finished one and bought another one yesterday, so that's why we're talking about it. But he's like, it has all the notes, but it's high proof. So if we know how to get it down to an exact number, we could m- ideally make... Make your own? Perfect. At your proof level? Yeah, this is my perfect creation for me. Interesting. So that could be... A- so how much water to add, how much ice to add, how much to get it to what you love consistently every time going forward. So you know, if I'm pouring a glass, I'm going to make a damn good glass for myself every time i'm staring at a stag junior you have right there same concept i mean stag junior neat is wonderful liquid caramel and fire because it's so hot it is very hot yeah That's but like a 128 if, if you can bring that one down and know exactly how to bring it exactly like your proof where, is 115 you can bring that 128 down to 115 now like you have that. the perfect like drink that. for you yeah so we're gonna we're gonna be Sounds playing scientific. with that. Sounds scientific. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna try and play with that here in a couple of weeks. Cool. All right. Loki. Loki. Episode three. I did not catch the title of this episode. Lamentus. Lamentus. That was the planet oh, they were on. Name of the planet. Yeah. Also, Lamentus is a, I think, Latin word for lamenting, which explains what everything they do while they're on the train, yep. lamenting over their histories. So, Loki follows Sylvie. We got her Sylvie, name yeah. officially. Uh, she is a Loki vi- variant. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sylvie Loffy daughter is her full name. Loffy being their dad from the Ice Giant. Yeah. Whereas Loki's last name is Loffy son. Yeah. Go figure. Loffy son, Loffy daughter. Yeah. Um, you get to watch their relationship develop, which yes. is exactly what I said would happen. Something's going to happen. They're going to end up together, grow on each other, yes. and he's going to come with a choice of TVA and his grand plan or 
this person and creating absolute chaos yeah. of her. Not on Vormir, which where we originally thought they were going to be. It was not Vormir. Which, good. There's not a whole lot you can yeah. do with that. Um, you learned a lot about the story, the people, and what's going on. You learned what they're trying to do, what she's trying to accomplish. Yes. And you saw her attempt. You kind of, you realized that she wasn't trying to bomb anything specific at the end of episode two. You're like, oh, fuck, she's creating all of these things. That's going to create timeline of chaos and a multiverse. Not the goal at all. She did all that just to get all of the people out of the TVA so she could go to the golden elevator Mm-hmm. With z- find as, the timekeepers with as little security to fight as possible, and she learned this by enchanting C twenty or whatever the girl's name. Yeah, the one that she abducted in the beginning mm-hmm. of episode two. So it shows, and she talks about it. She's like, "Oh, I just enchanted her, going back to a memory she had from hundreds of years ago, because she was a variant on Earth." He was like, "Wait." TVA people were created in TV on in TVA in the TVA by the Time Keeper lizards. Yeah, she was like, no, no, they're, she's from Earth. Loves margaritas. They're all variants. Yeah, he goes, they don't know that. He's like, oh, they don't know that. Yeah, because Mobius is sitting there. Said, yeah, I'm from here. Been here. How long life. have you been here? Hard to say. Don't really know. It's been here so long. So keep in mind, time is no matter what year constantly happening around them like tv right now is constantly happening around us yeah stuff's being played and happening whether we're watching it or not and we can dive in at different points and watch whatever that's kind of how time is working in this scenario so mobius could be on a jet ski in the 90s yeah did something to create a time variant pulled into the TVA because that's exactly what they said for C20 is she was a variant mm-hmm. B15 from the first episode she was a variant yep and Sylvie also talks about how there was only one line it was very quick and in passing she's like I spent my entire life fighting and running from these people talking about the TVA how she was too young to remember her mother. That's why she asked Loki about his relationship with his mom and the magic that he, she taught him. Yeah, because he even asked her about her mother, and she goes, it's been so long ago. Yeah. I don't even remember. I don't remember. She knew she was adopted from the yeah. word go. But she knew. Loki didn't. Loki didn't. He's like, well, I found out eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about an hour later. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> Um, Room on the left. Yeah. What's up, cat? Nope, I guess we're about to end that one. I'm going to stall and see what comes up next. Yeah. And we can just edit this. I don't know what music this is, but... That's Iron Man. Oh, okay. I listen to it when I work out sometimes. It's a giant playlist. (laughs) Yeah, it's from Iron Man 1. Cool. Anyway. Nothing specifically changed everything on this one. No. She goes to try and go through the uh, golden elevator. Loki stopping her teleports them to Lamentis. And what she says is one of the worst apocalyptic events ever. Yeah. There's a moon coming and you get to see that shit explode, crack open and come at them, which was a kind of cool scene. Yeah. Um, to go super deep when they get into that city Apparently, all that graffiti and all the stuff that's around is written in Cree. So, feasibly, if someone understands the Cree language and can decipher it, just like people speak Klingon. Yeah. 
there could be all Hidden kinds messages. of messages and just Easter eggs and stuff in there. I mean, the uh, James Gunn did it in Guardians of the Galaxy. Every time they showed a location, there was a serial number below it, and it told you Ego is Star Lord's dad, and yeah. Hmm. Yep. Interesting. So it wouldn't be the first time they did something like that. Yeah. So the entire time they're on a uh, Lamentus. Yes. They're trying to get to a. Uh, I'm I'm assuming a giant spaceship. That's what they're trying to run. They keep calling it the Ark. Yeah, the Ark. Um, which apparently is either somewhere for them to teleport off the planet, um, or to leave on. Get the power from the Ark. Into the little thing back, and even they can though teleport he teleport out of there. Yeah, even though he broke it, so they're trying to get the Ark and leave on the Ark. I'm assuming it's something along those lines. Okay. Because their little teleportation device, uh, he broke, apparently, when he jumped out of the... Or he was thrown out of the um, train. Yeah. Try to get to the Ark. Um, they're looking up at it, and then just big moon piece takes I, out the Ark. And it ends on that, and she even just walks off. As, yeah, she's like, oh, we're fucked. Well, God damn it, we're dead. So is this Owen Wilson to the rescue? That's the only thing I can really see. How, is either that or someone from Asgard... Because I also heard, um, what's his name, has a guest, or might have a guest appearance in this. Thor? No, not Thor. Um, Heimdall? Heimdall. Maybe he saves them because he can see Loki? I haven't heard that. And depending on when this Lamentus is, Heimdall could be dead. You know what? I think Heimdall is dead because I think they said it was 2077. It is 2077. So Heimdall's dead. Heimdall's dead. So he's not going to be in this. No. So then, yeah, it's got to be Owen Wilson. How's he going to find him, though? Maybe put something in his jacket. Time variant jacket. He's still wearing his yeah. get-up. He's not wearing the jacket anymore. But he might still have it. It's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, I don't or know maybe how the they're going to... TVA gonna... just somehow knows. Oh, maybe... Maybe they're still searching, um, you know, horrific things happening on planets. It's a shot in the dark. I don't see how else they're getting off this planet. If that was their one true shot, yeah. and it gets blown up in front of them, and then she was like, well, we're dead. It's yeah. got to be Owen Wilson to the rescue. I, yeah, I, how I, he finds them, it's like you always say, it's a line of dialogue. Oh, yeah. Oh, here's your tracker. You can make everything yeah. work with a line of dialogue. So, so when you don't, and there's plot holes... I am a huge <laughs> You're fuck, a stickler. I'm a huge <laughs> fucking brat about yeah. it. A huge brat. Yeah. I don't see any other way of them getting off though. Or someone's like, hey, I got a ship. <laughs> Why are you still here? Right, yeah. Yeah. There's it's gonna be iffy on how they get them out of there. But the only thing that makes sense to me so we're three episodes in. We're halfway through this series. So let's I I'm kinda leaning on what you said with Owen Wilson. He somehow shows up to get him, but if he does, he's taking them both in. Yeah. He's got Loki variant that's causing all the problem, killing all the people. Well, then you have both them back at the TVA now. And then you have Loki, Tom Hiddleston. Yes. So you have Sylvie Loki, who he's trying to stop and arrest. And then you have Tom Hiddleston Loki, who bailed on him. Yeah. So he doesn't know what's going on. He could assume that he was trying to help him, which would be the argument. But you get rid of them anyway. Mm -hmm. Now they're working to get Mobius on their side of saying, which would be a fantastic way to really explain, because we're halfway through. So you have three episodes to get to the fucking point now. Yeah. So Say, Mobius hey, shows not up. not born TVA. You had a life they, before this. They, took the, they brought you in. You spent hundreds of years here, wiped your memory, whatever the case is. Yeah. And they could use that as the vehicle to kind of explain... Turn him. The, well, not just him, us. Yeah. Because we would be on Mobius's kind of viewpoint on there. They're explaining to Mobius, but explaining to us of, here's what happened. Mm -hmm. Here's what we need to do. And here's how you can help us setting up your third act, bringing Mobius into the fold. And now you've, you were on path. Because right now... You could go on for another 10 episodes of chasing shit in a yeah. very... Jumping through timelines. And... Very Doctor Who-esque 
yeah situation which there was a lot of it'd be cool Oh, I would watch 15, 20 episodes. Of them just jumping through timelines and... Absolutely. Yeah. Experience different things. There was a million... The biggest thing in this episode was character development between introducing the Lokis together. Yep. And there were so many just callbacks to different stuff. So many callbacks. Uh, Lamentus is actually a planet in a uh, Annihilus Quest comic series. Okay. That they've referenced a couple different times. Um, that has a whole bunch of people in it. And you see Loki dancing and he smashes the cup and yells another. Which, slight nerd tangent. I am not an avid Rick and Morty fan. There is a cult following of Rick and Morty. Yes. I have watched half of the first season... It's good, it's entertaining, the dialogue's very funny, I just haven't committed to watching all of it. Fair. Season 5 of Rick and Morty just came out, like, two days ago. Okay. In the first episode, keep in mind, the writer for Loki is also a writer on Rick and Morty. Morty. They have a guy called Mr. Nimbus, who is apparently just a giant sexually fluid uh crotch thrusting aquaman okay for the love of god watch it watch it watch it so season five episode one look it up on youtube it's on there don't watch it on hulu because it's all bleeped out and you'll be irritated in the first 30 seconds okay uh very funny but in that mr nimbus also drinks wine smashes it and says another and you're like uh, that's a callback to another callback to another fourth call that's 16, 16 walls. callbacks <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was cool to see that almost side by side between the two but yes going back just little things like that uh even the train fight sequence kind of was a callback to indiana jones and uh the asking for tickets someone getting thrown out a window is on a train. On a train. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. Before I jump into my next uh, Lokiism. Okay. Last week we drank James E. Pepper 1776. That is weird. Yeah. Is that that a, was my first note. Is that a minty odd. nose? It smells like rubber to me almost. So we tried James E. Pepper 1776. A little more pepper on that one. At 100 proof. Posted it on the YouTubes. Yeah. And got a comment saying, if you like James E. Pepper, you have to try the James E. Pepper Pepper, Barrel Proof. So I walk into the place I normally get my stuff from today and ask him if he had any. He's like, I got one. Cool. Grabbed it. And now we're here. Apparently, this is infinitely better. The nose is odd. Yeah. It's not bad odd. It's just different odd. Well, there's a lot of ethanol. Yeah. So it is like a, sitting at like a little over 113 proof. Which isn't terribly high. Yeah. Because the original's 100 proof. So it's only 13 proof higher than their standard yeah. bourbon. Ooh, that's good. There's like a sweetness. Graham cracker. Yeah. Graham cracker. Like graham cracker with like... Some honey graham cracker. Well, okay, so take a walk with me through your pantry. Honey graham cracker, but for whatever reason, you have like a little bit of melted butter on there. Yeah. And then sprinkled it with cinnamon. It's a binder. Yeah. And then you sprinkled <laughs> it with a little bit of cinnamon. Yeah. Or like nutmeg. Probably nutmeg more than nutmeg, cinnamon. Nutmeg, yeah. They're very like similar, but cinnamon. one's yeah. a little bit drier, one's a little bit sweeter. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like you were making cinnamon toast, but you were like, "Fuck, I'm out of toast," so you just grab the graham crackers instead. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's a good call. That is this. a very graham crackery bourbon for me. Yeah. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of candy sweetness on the end on the second sip. Also yeah. very very oily, so this could open up with some water or some ice. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm a fan. Thank you, YouTube commenter. Thanks, guys. This is a good call. Jamesy Pepper, 1776, barrel proof. The other one did grow on us. I in, I didn't like it on the first couple sips, but at the end of it, you're like, okay, no, this is a basic sipper. It's a good, yeah, good if, solid sipper. If somebody who doesn't really appreciate bourbon but wants to drink it, I can show them something halfway decent. Grab that cheap bottle. You're not yeah. throwing down a Michter's barrel proof on this guy. <laughs> yeah. But you're like, yeah, this is this is pretty good. Maybe a cube or two just to open it up for someone that's new. It's simple. It's fine. Yeah. This is a step up from it. This is once your palate's evolved a little bit, you've yeah. acquired the taste of whiskey bourbon, and you're kind of ready to explore. Yeah, graham cracker, butter, nutmeg, mm -hmm. a little drier, and then finished off with the kind of candied sweetness, like a powdered sugar sweetness. Now, obviously, you have your kind of your oak, your sweet oak flavor on the end. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. So, of, of the three things that we just had, bourbon always wins. <laughs> <laughs> and we go back to the bourbon. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we finish with bourbon. That's... Especially a barrel proof. Yeah. Anything high proof bourbon, you're not going to taste anything else after this. Yeah. I agree. So, Lokiism. Lokiism. Okay. So, I... For those of you that haven't got on TikTok yet, if you're not already on TikTok, I don't know if I'm going to recommend for you to get on TikTok. You will waste half your life on TikTok. That's why I'm not on there TikTok. is some cool stuff on TikTok. There's a lot some of cool interesting stuff. stuff. I've learned a lot of things on TikTok. Mm -hmm. In doing so, we have our own TikTok. We do it's whiskey and nerd shit shorts. It is just us doing tastings. Um, what I'm going to do, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give a little disclaimer before I go into my Lokiism. Okay. That I learned on the TikToks. All right. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to have a TikTok ranked 23 to 1 Marvel. I've created a bracket. I've put, because the way the bracket worked out, some people have to have a first round buy. So the first round buys are going to go to Endgame, Ragnarok, Infinity War, the obvious choices. Okay. But then I'm going to give a TikTok video of Black Panther versus Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Winner moves on. Single elimination, TikTok rated, TikTok commented, see who wins. So we're going to have a TikTok 23 to 1 winner. I'm going to try to post one a day to kind of progress through the bracket. Interesting. Because it's I think it starts off with like 10, and then it goes to the second round, and it's like 8, and so on and so forth. So it's going to take so do roughly you, two and a half weeks to finish. Are you randomly putting things? It is randomly generated. The only thing that wasn't random was what gets the first round by. Okay. And I have, I think, Endgame, Infinity War, Ragnarok, um, Avengers... Avengers, uh, Age of Ultron, just the big Avengers movies. Yeah. Um, Civil War, because again, big Avenger movie. Yeah. Uh, those kind of got the first round buys. Okay. And it's all the single movies are gonna those battle are it randomly out. generated as to who's up against who. Man, that's gonna be hard if like right out of the gate you got Black Panther versus First Avenger. Yeah. You're like, yeah. Fuck. So it'll be ranked on by TikTok. So get on TikTok if you follow our channel. And give your ranking. And we're going to have a TikTok winner of the best 23 to 1. And I'll kind of give weekly updates as to where we're at with the bracket. Damn. So that's going to start tomorrow. We're going to do one, that's cool. one match per day. So it's going to take about two, two and a half weeks to finish it if I do one a day. Yeah. I'm going to have little video clips playing in the background of each. Yeah. But Probably yeah. can't put it on Instagram because they're going to shut us down for using copyrighted material. Probably. Bastards. Sorry, St. Cloud. I made a really awesome video with your shit, and TikTok didn't like the song I picked. So, No, Instagram didn't like Instagram. the song I picked. Instagram. Yeah. Like, okay, so my Lokiism. Lokiism. Okay, so there is a theory out there that Loki, the series, is taking place in the quantum realm. Time passes differently in the quantum realm. Time passes differently in the TVA. Okay, I've heard similar yet different. So, in, I think it was Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yeah. When they're in the quantum realm, there's a little bubble with a little bitty town in it. Apparently, that is the TVA. According to this theory, that is the yeah. TVA. Um, time passes differently in the quantum realm. Time passes differently in the TVA. Um, Kang the Conqueror 
Okay, so the next Ant Man movie is Ant Man Quantum Mania. Yep. Um, King the Conqueror is going to be the bad guy. Correct. King the Conqueror also travels through, through time. time. Um, Even so one of the space lizards looks like King the Conqueror. Wearing a mask like mm-hmm. King the Conqueror. Um, so the theory is that King the Conqueror is going to be the one and only time keeper. They're going to break in, and that's going to take us into um, Ant-Man. So that is the theory, is that the TVA is in the quantum realm. I don't... I agree, but I disagree. So I agree that that is a very viable source of when you're running something as straightforward as time deviation and in an upcoming movie i think next year yes uh you're running something with a villain that's straight off time deviation Mm -hmm. um i think you could be onto something that either kang is the only one or kang is the only one to survive whatever sylvie the leader of the three yeah. Sylvie can take out two and Kang the Conqueror escapes. Gets away and jumps off into the that. quantum realm to hide. Yeah. I think you could, with just a little bit of dialogue, explain that the powers and abilities, they're powerful and well uh, educated enough to know how to pull the power from the quantum realm for them to be able to. I mean, if fucking Iron Man can figure it out in Endgame of how to jump into the quantum realm to use that. Yes. The fucking windows or doorways that create to go from place to place from time to time mm-hmm. could be just quick passages. You're essentially stepping into the quantum realm into the next place. We just did it better than the guy that figured it out in his dining room. <laughs> Eating a popsicle. Yeah, finishing a popsicle. <laughs> yeah. Shit. <laughs> yes. You know what that is? That's extortion. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. In the, I think after we watched the first episode, you said the Loki series is gonna be the first series that actually affects the movies. Uh, my theory. Okay. Not because we heard not ru- confirmed. Yeah, we heard rumors of. <laughs> we all heard of them are gonna affect everything. And all yeah, they're gonna affect anything, especially Wandavision. Like, this is going to have direct impact. Well, especially because she's actually going directly into a movie. Yeah, she is supposed to have a Falcon main... Falcon Winter Soldier, they're creating a new movie now. Yeah, with them. after the fact. And then, I don't know if Loki's going to be in Thor Love and Thunder or not. I don't think so. I don't think he is either cause because he's, he's dead. dead. Yeah. It's hard to be in it. But... Right there, you need to add in a little thing where Th- Thanos says no resurrections this time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I don't think Loki is... Tom Hiddleston is not supposed to be in Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder. At least, I mean, you could throw him in as a flashback, whatever. But with what you're dealing with, how Loki works, and if they're successful at creating just a multiverse of stuff, you just made bringing in mutants completely feasible the multiverse of mutants well not only that it, it's it's earth it's all the same stuff except mutants grew on this one Tony Stark got kidnapped on that one they happened and they happened in the Marvel Universe at the same time but in this situation you find a Doctor Strange way of intersecting and them. creating something into secret wars or bigger. Yeah. I like that. I think everybody and their mom is trying to figure out a way to make mutants come in. That's the only way so, you can feasibly do it. You have, cause mutants have been around for hundreds of years. I mean, apocalypse I mean, we, was one of the first ones and he was came out in Egyptian times. Yeah. You know, so, how do you retcon your MCU trilogy, your Infinity War trilogy, your Infinity yeah. War saga? These guys just didn't show up the entire fucking time. They were Eternals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been in hiding this whole time. Yeah, exactly. So, to me, that seems like the one easiest way to make it work that checks 
all of your boxes of necessities and fandom and, you know, people like us that'll sit down in front of a microphone and bitch about stuff. Warner Brothers. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm going to make a shirt that says WB with like a big circle and a cross through it. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Well, yeah, it's yeah. it seems to be the, well, the easiest and most you know, easiest way that makes sense. Most rational. Yeah. Like, okay, no, people can buy into that very quickly off of this. Y you guys have the writers to put in all the dialogue that needs to make sense. Yeah. Problem solved. So we've even talked in the past about how all the different ways you could add mutants to Mar or to the MCU. Yeah. You could have it be from when Thanos first snapped because the line of dialogue has already been inserted of high levels or the highest levels of gamma radiation every emitted. Yeah, we're off of that. But again, you Wolverine's hundreds of years old. True, you have no way of explaining Apocalypse. If that was how mutants were created. Yeah, Apocalypse in Sabanur was again thought yeah. of as a god in Egypt yeah. way back when. Yeah. So that's a good point. Mm, yeah. It was a theory. But you don't have those plot holes answered. Whereas you don't even have to touch any of those plot holes by saying it's this just thing, that, multiverse. thing that Loki fucked up. And then you see like a red line come back down. Yeah. This thing that Loki fucked up. This is the consequences. Here's the world that happened there. And you want to talk about time flow in different places. Watch season five, episode one of Rick and Morty. It's so good. <laughs> How big of a foreshadowing thing could they have created is if they do start bouncing around time zones and they bounce around one of those mutants and then bounce back out? People would shit their pants. <laughs> and by people, I mean me. me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be sitting there watching it and be like, I need a new couch. <laughs> Worth it. Yeah. And then in 2026, we get Avengers versus X-Men, and we're all happy. God. They would need a, mo a new movie chair. Yeah. That theater will look like a Jackson Pollock when I would leave. <laughs> 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 the fuck happened every over here? I released every bodily fluid I had. Yeah, I'm so happy. All of them. It smells like shit and is sticky. Yeah, I know. that happened. You're welcome. Don't undercook the fries. I asked for extra crispy. <laughs> anyway, can't wait for episode four. You got three episodes left. Three episodes left. Roughly uh, two hours, two and a half hours. Two hours, 15. Yep. So we have a whole movie left. We have we just finished movie one, going into movie two. We just finished Infinity War. We're going into the endgame. Yep. All right. We're in the endgame now. Anything else? I got nothing else. All right. Social medias. Christian Mingle. Farmers only. Only fans. <laughs> <laughs> you you want to see me pour bourbon in a thong? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see those whiskey reviews. <laughs> oh, uh, God. Two guys, one bottle. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. Nope. All right. Uh, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, email, YouTube, whiskey and nerd shit. Emails whiskey and ns at yahoo.com. Uh, Instagram's the only one that's different is whiskey and nerd shit, but in the word shit, the I is the number one. Because um, fuck Instagram. Yeah, Instagram's not liking us lately, but we're still posting on it almost daily. I kind of fell off the reviews for a couple days, but I'm back on them. Look, uh, we're going to hit as often as possible, but, you know, we're, this isn't monetized and we have jobs. <laughs> um, 23 to 1 via TikTok. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post it. That's going to be cool. I'm going to move it over to Instagram, too. So it'll be TikTok and Instagram since I can share them simultaneously. Yeah. And it actually shares to Facebook, too. It's just we don't really have a whole lot of participants on Facebook. We have a lot more on Instagram and yeah. TikTok. Yes. Um, so get on there. It's going to be daily starting tomorrow so starting on sunday 
Ju- June-ish, 20-ish, if. Um, Nailed it. This Sunday. I don't know what today is. Tomorrow will be June 27th. Starting June 27th. Um, <laughs> will we have the first... June-ish, 20-ish, I knew it was June 20th something. I know it wasn't July yet. Uh, we'll have the first battle. Um, I don't remember what it is. It'll be on TikTok. So search TikTok, Whiskey Internship. Search, which this will be showing up tomorrow anyways. Or at least the audio will. The audio is on Apple, Spotify, anywhere you can listen to a podcast. Just type in Whiskey and Nerd Shit. Um, the YouTube videos usually come out Sunday night, Monday morning-ish. Uh, just depends on how long it takes the video to upload. Makes sense. Um, but participate in the 23 to 1. Let us know what you think is going to happen in the rest of the series. Um, send a comment into something, and we'll send you a bottle of something very special. Not a bottle, but sample. Like a sample bottle. Oh, so like a little we're, like we're throwing one, down one and a half ounce pour. We have like some Elijah Craig 18s. We have like all the mixers, new riffs. Uh, I haven't opened yet, but I got an Old Forester 150 today, Iron Roots. Today I got a random Buffalo Trace kosher rye. Uh, I'll open that eventually. We have. Uh, St. Cloud, Stag, Buffalo Trace, Eagle Rare, Knob Creek, Lux Rose, Scotch. Jeez, Scotchy Scotch. So many uh, Scotchies. So yeah, send us a comment. Let us know what you think is going to happen in Loki episodes four through six. And until then, stay nerdy, drink whiskey, hail Tell Hydra. Hydra. That's good. Good job, Mr. Pepper. Yeah. Good job. It does end peppery, though.